Welcome to today's Unity Prayer. We want to thank everyone for being here today. We uh, want to wish all the uh, October birthday uh, people happy birthday for this month. And also, people that had an anniversary, my daughter had an anniversary yesterday. We want to wish them a happy anniversary. We also want to give, take time to give thanks and uh, and uh, meditation and prayer to the Lord for all the good things that has done. There's been some uh, tragic things that happened that last, last night in Raleigh. We had, we had a situation where uh, allegedly a 15-year-old with a rifle uh, shot, went up, shot up the neighborhood in Greenway Parkway with five uh, people lost their lives. We want to pray our prayers for those families and also uh, for the, the, the victims and the police force who are an emergency care workers who rushed in the line of fire to uh, try to quell and bring peace to the neighborhood. This month of October is Breast, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we'd like to remind everyone to get, get your uh, get, get your checkups and remind your, you know, talk to your your uh, parents, or mother, your mothers, your sisters, your aunts, and your nieces, and anyone who uh, has it had a recently had it, just remind them that you know uh, early detection is one of the um, one of the major factors in the in, the, in uh, lowering the risk of, of harm to the situation. And we want to pray that everyone has a healthy. Uh, life and it goes on. The scripture was uh, for this week was Matthew the fourth chapter verse uh, nineteen, and the song uh, for for this week was by Dottie People from the YouTube was uh, for the Unity Prayer was He's an on time God. Yes, it is. And it, and matter of fact, the scripture talks about the word come, and right there in the in the, one of the first lines of the lyrics, it says, he comes when you want him. He, he's always right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Then, uh, we want to go ahead and start with the scripture reading. Matthew 4, chapter, verse 19. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. This is a comeness to move toward and draw near or arrive. At work, you could decide to come out of your shell and come on like gangbusters, come up through the ranks and perhaps see your professional dreams come true. At home, it's possible to come with a whisper of coming unglued, come to a screeching halt, come to your senses, or come back from the break. You can come to the aid of a friend today Come full circle, come to a conclusion. Refuse to cross any bridge before you come to them. Just be sure that in all you're coming in and also you're going, you don't miss Jesus saying, Come, follow me. The word comes suggests movement. It tantalizes us with the possibility of change. You are one, you are in one place, but you have the opportunity to leave that place and go somewhere better. In the mouth of Christ, the word is a holy summons. A call to walk away from an old, dead end life and to embark on a new life of surprises and adventure. In essence, Jesus says to those who trust him, Come along with me, follow where I lead, and watch what I do, listen to what I say, learn from me. As you come with me, you will, you will come to be like me. I will transform you. That's what a disciple is and, and does. Remember what Jesus said in Luke. 6th chapter, verse 40. A student who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Christ's command, come, is an invitation to change. It is a call to become like him. That's God's purpose for us. A basic rule of life is that we become like those we spend time with. You've seen this. Close friends pick up each other's expressions and mannerisms. Married couples often begin to think alike and finish each other's sentences. We are called by Christ to come, and why 
so that we might be with him, become like him, and learn to live for him. Before Christ ever tells anyone to do anything, he first says, come, come to me for rest. Come to me for healing. Come to me for forgiveness. Come to me for hope. Come to me for cleansing. Come to me for restoration. He calls us to most clearly through his written word. He also summons us through the events of our lives and by hundreds of other means. What does he want? Does he want your money? He wants your stuff? He, he wants your activities? No. Christ wants your heart. He wants you. The only question is, will we answer it? His disciple called to come and be his follower. According to Jesus, this is more than having warm thoughts about him. It is more than squeezing him into whatever free time we have left after we've done anything else we want to do. To come to Christ, we have to turn our backs on, on other things. Logically, going to him means leaving some other things behind. It is not a one-time decision. As one man put it, it's a big yes followed by a lot of little okays. Again, the word come, it means to move, to move toward, draw near, and to arrive. We want to also take this time out as we go to prayer, to pray for the sick and shut in, the uh, folks, uh, people that uh, in, in need of, of uh, financial assistance and, every, and all the other different situations. Let's, let's go to God in prayer, communicate with Jesus. Lord Jesus, it is in your almighty name that I pray. Father, your word says that a patient man is better than a warrior and one who controls his temper than one who, take, who tries to take a, a city. You have admonished me in your word to control my body, my appetite, and my behavior in a way that is holy and honorable to you. Father, I pray for the victims of the violence in the, that's wrapping around our cities lately here in Goldsboro. I pray for the city of Raleigh that they may heal from, from the loss of life. I pray for the children in Thailand last week that had to suffer at the hands of an ex-security uh, guard or, and, and whatever the demons was in their mind or whatever, Lord. We ask that you continue to protect them. I pray for our students, Lord. I pray for their protection as they go, come to and from each and every day. I pray for those who are starting to fill out the juniors and seniors who are starting to get ready to go on to the next year, whether or not they're going to a college or a community college or a four-year college, whatever they make their transition to, that whatever their transition, that they put their trust and faith into you and know that not to worry that you would take care of things, and if it's your will, their wishes can come true. Father, I pray for the ones who are in prison. May they change their lives. May they come to you and realize that the loss of every lost soul has to ask for salvation and have faith in you and trust in you, and they can change from their ways and rehabilitate themselves, Lord. I pray for our senior citizens, Lord. I pray for the ones that's in the hospitals, the ones that's taking these uh, medical tests and everything, that their results will be favorable to them and to not to have no anxiety, no stressing out in their life. That whatever, when they come to you, Lord, that I connect with them, that they can answer, that you would answer their prayer. Lord, I pray that, you know, there's a walk in Wilson, North Carolina tomorrow for the families of uh, victims of, uh, of, this of this cancer, Lord. Pray for their safe passage and, and uh, may everyone reach the, uh, the goal and, and then all in your name, Lord. May the fruit of, the, of our self-control continue to increase in our life, Lord. And that God can, can be evident in the way that we can see and how we can shop and the hobbies that we engage in. May every aspect of who I am now be under the control of the Holy Spirit. I submit to you now in Jesus' name, Father. Empower me to keep a tight rein on my tongue. May I be quick to listen 
slow to speak, and slow to become angry, knowing that anger does not bring the righteousness life that you desire. May I be blessed with my mouth and my life. Father, it's good to praise you. It's good to proclaim your love in the morning. And Lord, I thank you for, for the, your faithfulness at night, at the end of the day. Whatever journey we we'll be on, that you have looked after us, looked after our families, Lord. Some are transitioning to different uh, places, Lord. We ask that there's safe passage. You are the one who makes me glad. You open my eyes to see the works of your hands and sponsor me in your spirit. The song of joy, for you are worthy of the highest praise I can offer. Forgive me, Father, for allowing my heart to be captured by the cares of this world instead of you and your greatness. How thankful am I for the sacrifice of Jesus for my sin, that he saved me completely, interceded for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. What a grace that salvation is mine, Lord. You are great and awesome. May I always sing of your great love and make known with my mouth your continuing faithfulness to all generations. For your love stands firm forever, and your faithfulness stands firm in the heaven itself. And I know that you are able to do above and beyond. You accomplish all these things in Christ Jesus in me, and I pray for it in his name. Amen. Amen. Wanna thank you for joining us and uh wanna ask that you could Time in, chime in again with us again on, on Sunday morning at 9 30 for our Sunday school. And the Sunday school lesson is going to be uh, coming uh, from, from Judges, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 27. Confidence provides necessary courage. And it's talking about answering, fulfilling the call of God in our lives that requires courage. Again, it comes along with our word of the day coming when the Lord. Called us, he called Gideon as a judge to come forward and, and be, be of good courage to take care of the, what Yahweh said he would have done. And uh, we're going to have a good lesson on that. Join us for our speaker of the hour on, on, at 10 30. And uh, we ask that you also join us next Wednesday for a Bible study where the pastor is continuing his uh, lesson on character education. Thank you for, like again, like I said, for joining us. We ask that you have a blessed weekend. Goodbye.